<laughs> We're good. Hey, it's Coach Nikki, and thank you guys for joining us for this week's stress call. Now, to all of you guys in the U.S., you guys have been following for a while, so thank you guys so much for being here, but this week's a little different. Welcome to all our global um, participants in this week's stress calls. So we now have a stress call in the evenings um, and all, uh, at um, 5 p.m. East, uh, excuse me, Mountain Standard Time. I keep messing up my times because I deal with all the time zones. So 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So for those of you guys who are in the U.S. and want to be actually join in on that call, you're more than welcome to on a regular basis. And those of you in, in Africa can join on the evening call. It's going to be in the middle of the night on Saturday morning for you. But you're still welcome to join. You might be awake. But this week is also different because somebody I highly respect and value not only as a, a friend, but somebody who is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to mental health. And he has a million letters past his name, but I usually stop at just, hey, Jared, what's up? Let's play games. Because his family is the family that I normally play games with. But sadly, well, not sadly, because I really enjoy it. Our conversations revolve around the amazing methods that are out there. And this week we're going to talk about a few of them. So this is our, what, third take? It's at least our third take. We're at least on the third take because we try to, no, it's the second then. Is it? Yeah, no. Okay, we're on a multiple take. So hopefully this one works out tonight because we're not using my camera, we're using his. And um, I'm going to let you spend some moments explaining your alphabet beyond your name sure and yeah i have a i have an msw a jd and an lcsw and uh currently i'm really just only using the lcsw um i'm no longer a practicing lawyer uh on inactive status with that because i left it to follow my first love which was the healing art of therapy and so that's that was the first thing i did when i when i graduated school um just after a little bit of law clerk work, I went into to therapy, loved it, um, had to leave it because I couldn't afford to keep doing it in California. Uh, but ultimately, I decided I'd make a comeback. And when I did, I realized that uh, there were not a lot of methods that were being used regularly and commonly in the field that fit most of the people that were coming back again and again for treatment. Because most of the people that were coming back again and again for treatment were dealing with deep set attachment issues, uh, trauma, or complex trauma, developmental trauma, complex trauma, developmental trauma, conflated with new, fresh, live, raw PTSD. Many layers is yeah. what I'm hearing here. Yeah, and then, and then a lot of times we're looking at just addiction treatment, but it's so rare for me to, to, to work with somebody on an addiction uh, that does not also include attachment issues and trauma. Yeah, well, how many times have you seen with the VA where a veteran comes in with some issues, we'll call it issues, and they go, you've been drinking, you have to go to SARP before we touch these issues. That happens a lot. Matter of fact, it's one of the reasons why I actually opened the PTSD retreat a long time ago, is because veterans were coming back in for that. But what we found is if we worked with the issues, the addictions also changed. So there's really cool stuff that's happening. But okay, that's the end of the formalities because the best part of our thing is just chit-chatting. And last week, we actually went over a really cool method. I actually ended up using it, guys. So just, you know, Jared is like a sneaky therapist. He like just kind of sneaks it right in there. And next thing you know, you feel like you've gone to a mental health, emotional health spa. So for the fact you didn't have to get undressed, you could do it anywhere. So, let's talk about this because this was the coolest thing last week. Yeah, I mean, last week we were chilling, we were talking, we were having some really good time making some some sushi. homemade sushi. Yeah. Yes, it was. I, yeah. that's it. It was. I like, that's his oldest daughter. She graduated. Oh, round of applause! And we celebrated by making homemade sushi. Yeah, it was, was fun. really good. It was a yeah. huge mess. Oh yeah, and we were talking shop as usual. We, yes, we, we exactly. Wanted, we want to talk about healing because we dig it, we're into it. And so... Passion and purpose. Yeah, and so so um, as I was kind of just talking and remembering and attuning to myself, getting all chill and centered in my <laughs> and body. And I was going... Yeah, we, we were talking about some of the, I think, 
we didn't talk much about it, but it was just the stresses that you had, yeah. had building up. And I could very much feel uh, shifts and changes in my body as I noticed you. When, you. when you get centered and you notice someone else, there's this natural human thing that just comes awake and alive. Your mirror neuron responses just come awake and you feel stuff with other people in a more conscious way. Instead of, instead of just feeling it like, oh, I feel, oh, I don't feel okay around this person or I feel like they're stressed. Uh, no, you actually just, you, you realize like, oh my gosh, I'm here with this person, I'm feeling it with this person. And so we talked about finding the feeling in your body. Yeah. And by the way, that all that back and forth is so normal. And and we sometimes, I, I've actually done this myself before I learned to block, take on other people's emotions and other people's stuff and totally react and unconsciously claiming it. Yeah, you know, and honestly, I've seen that. There's a certain sort of... Uh, it starts as a liability, but it turns into a superpower when you're when you're conscious, like you were, you were saying, you, you're able to, to, to block it out and stay present with this person with, you, while, while you're riding a bucking Bronco with them. But, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. That's when it gets <laughs> exhilarating sometimes. But um, what what um, what I've noticed is some of some of the newer therapists that sort of came in with this superpower, they'll walk into a room and immediately start having mirror responses to others. They feel like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs, to give the southern saying, you know, for, for, for this. And, um, and, and then I we'll... I just visualized that, by the way. <laughs> Poor cat. Poor cat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, they'll, so they'll, they'll, they'll just start attuning to people. And so um, I had a fellow uh, manager tell me, look, um, sometimes my, my people just need a little help after they've, they've uh, been having responses to others, uh, to, to some of the clients that are, that are really volatile, right? And so sometimes I'll sit down with other therapists and feel stuff with them, uh, teach them how to, to notice uh, the triggered response in their body. And as they watch it, uh, well, the thing starts to change. I mean, anybody who's been practicing mindfulness, uh, who's been breathing and noticing and attending to their feelings, they're going to notice it. it starts well, you mean to like the tingles I started feeling and the shake, and you're like, keep going. <laughs> yeah. And, and for you, you were willing, you knew what it was. And so you wanted to keep going. For some people, they freak out. They, they say, oh my goodness, I, 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 my body is going crazy inside. There's, there's, there's stuff uh, popping and bursting and, and shivering. And, and, um, well, it's very disconcerting if you're not expecting it. Yeah, especially if you've been checked out, kind of dissociated for a long time. Getting re-embodied, there's a little turbulence, so we always take it slow. Okay, I'm doing it again. Just so you guys know, he goes into lingo frequently. I have no problem with interrupting him. That's because I love him that much. So, thank you. <laughs> thank welcome. you. I'm going to speak English. Thank you. It's a good language to yeah. practice. So, so we were sitting together, and, and I invited you to just notice where the feeling was. And as the discharge, the, the movement inside your body started to happen. Yeah, all that energy. Yeah, that energy. Um, I, I could immediately feel my body reacting to that. And so, um, so that's why I was saying stuff like, all right, good. It looks like something's happening here. Mm -hmm. It kind of seems like it's happening here. He did a lot of this that night. And I was like, okay, and he noticed me doing this, and he's like, okay, it's moving, okay, that's good, let it keep moving, and he saw all sorts of comments, so keep going. Right, and so um, my, my watching you while you did this heightened your ability to feel. The, the insula, the part, of the, the part of the brain that becomes really active when you're deeply attending to what's going on inside of you. Um, it becomes more active when somebody is witnessing in a non-judgmental, uh, caring way. A totally supportive, sacred space. Right. And so this interplay between us, you feel I have a mirror response. I metabolize it and, and start feeling it moving through my bob body, right? It Your starts bobby? Bobby. Yes. My bobby. <laughs> Okay, I'm feeling it moving through my body. Yes, and then, keep and going. Then, and then my response to you is going to have kind of the 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 digested version of what of uh, what it was. Yeah, and then, but it doesn't have to be a a a specific counselor, and it doesn't have to be a specific therapist. There's many different people that are out there that on on all different levels that people can work with. But what about if they're working with a friend? Yeah, that's a great way to do it. And well, back in the days of the encounter movement, I'm no expert in it, but it's like we people were doing a lot of work with the the encounter groups, the informal sort of person to person therapy groups. And there's some weird things that happened with that. I don't know all the details, but but the beauty is if you're with somebody who is a good friend, someone that you can actually 
really trust if something goes awry inside of you mm -hmm. if you find yourself in a state where you are becoming really emotionally unhinged and you're with somebody who, who you really trust to take care of you or if necessary take you to somewhere to get deeper help or to notice quick enough to help you chill out and calm down before it gets bad yeah that's, that's a, it's a very useful thing to do with another person especially someone that's actually used to seeing you get all hyped up and needs is good at telling you hey Chill out for a second. You just need to take a moment, breathe. Yeah, and sometimes in couples counseling, when it comes to the, the, the body-oriented aspect, I'll sometimes have them stand and talk. And if, if it's something where it's appropriate, if they're, if they're dealing with sort of touch issues and closeness issues, um, to, have them, to have them sort of uh, hold each other and notice where the tensions are in the other person's body Ooh. and notice their own feeling. What ends up happening is a lot of times when you when you have somebody who feels unheard because the other person isn't talking, for example, that's just a mm. real common thing in couples therapy. You know, it's a, they'll suddenly realize, oh my goodness, I feel all this stuff in my body. He's actually doing the work, or she's actually doing the work. You know, and there's stuff going on inside. I don't I don't have to have the words yet. You that's know? so cool. Um, thinking about couples therapy and, and thinking about that. You made me think about um, during human caring listening techniques. I actually have people, if they have a trust and a an already established relationship, they can hand on a heart to hand on a heart, and they breathe together. That's beautiful. And yeah, it's to open. It's literally to open doors between them, and to get deeper into what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing to see transformation happen. As long as I don't like doing with gigantic groups. I did learn that a thousand people is too huge when there's a language barrier, because then it's like, la, 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 la. that's what she said, you know, <laughs> and that kind of disrupts things. But there's there was still some benefits, and it was cool to see people. I saw women um, doing this, and then both started crying. And the, I always had women with women, always men with men, um, and even when they if they're we had odd pairings. We would do hands, don't touch, just feel the energy in between. Gotcha. Um, and I, oh, I just gave myself the orange chills. But it's amazing. It's amazing. Tears start rolling. People start hugging that didn't know each other, you know, afterwards. And it's just amazing how much energy can heal. Yeah, and, and recognizing, I mean, there's going to be a, a heightened connection and, uh, for lack of a better word, an intimacy between you. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when, when you go on that journey together, yeah, you know, and so, and so, so recognize like, yeah, you're going to, you're going to feel a lot of connection, a lot of closeness for many people. It's a really spiritual thing to feel, uh, so deeply with another person. It may even be the first time. Yeah. And for some people it is. Yeah. They've, uh, they, they've often not noticed when, when they were connected, they just noticed, oh, I feel better around some people than others. And to have this deep, intense experience, it's, it's a, it's a game changer. It's a, an eye opener. Yeah. And for me last week, I went from being ah, to having like it, my my arms, my like I was shifting and I was spazzing out, you know, for lack of a better term. And but by the end of the weekend, I was a very unbalanced last week. I am more closely aligned with what works for me, um, more centered and more comfortable. And I, I explained this. On take number one and two, or one, the, the one that actually worked but didn't work, um, I explained to him that it felt like I went through an, a mental health spa. Like, at first it was just, I had things going on for a few days. And I said at first it was like a Thai massage except for the fact that it didn't hurt. And it was amazing. And I would love to like see more people experiencing this. Yeah, you know, reality is that um, I mean, one of the one of the first methods that really helped me understand this is the work of Peter Levine with his somatic experiencing method. Oh, time and out. Guess who I get to speak to? Who's that? Uh, start with Dr. Levine. Oh, I wonder if it's the same dude. So, um, hey, we'll quite a guy. That. We'll have to talk about that because there's been so much going on. But anyway, go ahead. Oh yeah, his work is amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, he he brings together the best sources. Um, he's uh, you know, forty years of of, of figuring this stuff out, you know, till till now, and um, I mean, people, all sorts of practitioners will use his somatic experiencing method. You know, uh, therapists, uh, body workers, 
uh, other folks who want to be somatic experiencing practitioners. Okay, just we're going to break it back down again. Somatic. Yeah, somatic experiencing. We're talking about a whole uh, integrative uh, sort of body. I, I want to say body soul when you're talking about the soma. So we, we're not focusing on head. We're focusing on exactly the whole life experience in that moment, the whole body experience in that life. Whole body experience, spirit, soul, multiple layers. Yeah, and honestly, I appreciate the word life because there are so many things from the past that still uh, are alive in you in implicit processes that don't ever hit the frontal lobes with, with memories. You know, we don't think, when we usually think of memories, we're thinking about explicit memory, you know, and, and uh, one of the best explanations of, of the difference between explicit memory and, and some of the deeper stuff in, inside, well, it came from Levine and then uh, uh, Patricia Ogden with her sensory motor therapy and a lot of the things that she came up with uh, in a convergent or parallel and then convergent way. You know, I, I, I got to say, um, being able to bring the body into uh, the, the work you do, into the work of consciousness, it's, it's critical. Yes. It's critical. And one of the things that, that uh, uh, Levine helped me, helped me really see was that. And honestly, um, ev everything else that I, that I did was more meaningful after studying this work. That's amazing. And I, I say that's amazing because it's, it's not just you that's affected. Right. It's every single person you're coming in contact with, not just the clients that come in, but also your peers, you know, and it's a benefit to everyone and even into your family and, and your neighbor, his neighbors, <laughs> it's, it, it's a ripple effect and it's a beautiful ripple. I love that ripple. May it continue. Um, one of the things I was going to mention earlier, now I'm, I'm actually stuck on it because it doesn't matter. I'm, I lost it. Not I'm stuck on it. I'm still having issues, but, um, what I'm seeing you share with me, when you work with me and you're talking, just, you know, I feel like I'm working when I'm talking with you sometimes. And that's a good thing. Because I'm like, ah, I get to release in a good way. But then it's like, I don't have to think. I can just feel and be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. When, when, you, when you're not trying to, a lot of times when you're, when you're utilizing uh, mind-based me my, mind methods, uh, See, that's it's, fast. Yeah, thought-based methods, cognitive methods, insight-oriented methods, narrative, uh, putting together methods. Uh, they're, they're extraordinarily useful, but really, what they're what's so useful about them is that you're um, you're using this in, the, the, the inhibitory pushback system mm -hmm. to, to 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 then capture emotion and do things. But it's but it is the pushing back system when you're working uh, from the bottom up with the body. Yeah, what ends up happening is there's this this natural flow and a lot of the, the brilliance that you may have picked up in learning some of these self-help methods or mind-based methods uh, just comes rushing in. You're, you're, I mean, I've worked with guys that did uh, cognitive, irrational, emotive behavior therapy and, and they've learned this process for working things out, but it's not quite enough when they're deeply uh, triggered and, and uh, say on a traumatic level. Um, and so, so what will happen a lot of times is as they start to um, hold the energy moving through their body, the energy and information coursing through their body and, and just be with it and watch it and get curious about it, uh, and it starts to move and they start feeling better, whatever sort of thinking errors were coming up, they start confronting them naturally, Which automatically. Which is huge. Yeah. When they've gone, so many folks have come forward, you know, well, I've tried all the therapies. I've been here. I've done this. And yet they'll do the work when it's coming from the body up, yeah. and then they're like, mm. yeah, and none of it's lost because all yeah. of those, all of the the wisdom of it, it's like that stuff that I thought wasn't working for me anymore, that was working for other people, and I maybe thought they were lying. No, now it works for me. Yeah, and um, we said this on tape too, <laughs> in reference to the fact that we're not just talking surface stresses and traumas. We're talking about deep seated stress and trauma multiple layers and that comes from multiple layers. Now you guys you guys have heard me say this before. Our bodies are like a Coke bottle and we have so many different stuff that's just been piling up. And things that we don't even know. Like for example, being squeezed out of a tiny hole when you're a big baby. That can be traumatizing. Think about it. And you don't remember that, but your body sure does. I mean that's just not a comfort thing. Imagine coming out cone at it. You know, this is, that's there, that's sitting at the bottom of your Coke. 
and you, you don't know it's there and it's, so it's still sitting there and then you've got the first time you learned how to ride a bike and you'd been trusting mom and dad and they said they're going to be there and then they let go and you, you fell <gasps> oh my gosh they lied to me i got hurt you know now we have more things that are piling and then you have what the first time you got your heart broken um you lost a tooth or or somebody helped you lose a tooth you know and these things these are little things but they they add up and you may not you're an adult you're going that's not important but for your body it's all sitting there oh yeah i mean even before we have words to put to it i mean the yeah. primal fear of not being able to breathe as a new baby the oh, yeah. the the longing for attachment when you had to be in an incubator you know and it's like yeah there's no words for that there's no explicit memory you couldn't even see there's no visual memory um but absolutely that uh that unsettled feeling in the body. And we're still talking normal stuff. We haven't normal, even talked yeah. about the big T's. There's little traumas and then there's big traumas. And I, I call them little T's and big T's. Yeah. But we're still yeah. talking about the little, every person deals with T's. Yeah, let alone the situation where your um, natural uh, bodily needs or your survival needs were thwarted by force. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking, uh, it's like every single one of these come into play in the work. I mean, how, how often, you know, will I see somebody who's working through an intense loss or, or, yeah. or tra tra traumas, usually indirectly. I don't usually take a direct approach. We start on the outskirts and move in. God bless spiraling. Yeah, right? You spiral so. in. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, and so, so um, yeah, what will happen is they'll, they'll often start having this implicit memory come up, this, this triggering, this feeling of being unsettled in the body. They'll feel it shivering and tingling and heating through the body. Uh, sometimes even with the jolts and, and shakes, and as long as I let them know, hey, it's all right, this is a good thing, then they don't freak out, right? They don't That's stop awesome. the process. And so, and then what will happen is they'll say, oh my goodness, and oh, I haven't thought about that in a long time, and they don't have to tell me yet, because I already know that it's something from way back there, and they'll just keep going, you know? And, and when, they, when they'll tell me, if, if, I'll tell them, if you're comfortable telling me, go ahead, you know, we'll talk about it. Um, they'll, they'll tell me about stuff like, oh, I was young, you know, this happened, and, and I remember this, and then I have all these irrelevant memories of other things that happened around that time. And it's a real common experience. As, as the body reintegrates, you get all these, this, this sort of weave of memories that comes back in. That's kind of interesting, because with PTSD, you have physical symptoms as well. Like, all of a sudden, guys start thinking, oh, I'm getting old, my hip is hurting. You know, well, actually, it's not his hip hurting. It's a phantom pain from back in high school when he got tackled on the football field and he bruised his hip bad enough to where he had to stop for a while. Oh, yeah, but it'll come up, right? It's coming up now. Yeah. And, or they have, all right, I'm going to be honest, gas, really bad, raunchy gas come out. You know, but it's it's shifting. It's trapped energy moving. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, you can keep going. Do you guys, he's awesome. We can do this all night, but we're not going to. Yeah, and so, so really, I mean, we've, when, when we, we've talked a little bit about the, the human caring listening technique yeah. and, and how you will help people really access uh, the feelings inside the bodily processes, uh, working with connection and, and deep listening, you know, a really empathic listening. Um, and there's, there's release that can come with that. There's a lot of release that can come with that. And so really, when, when you can bring another person into your life, you can attend to your feelings. You can start to become centered and feel feel the release in your body. And, and this then, is before you're even talking. Yeah, even before you're talking. So and you don't you, have to share the trauma. Yeah, you don't. Stuff in that moment. There's a lot of work I've done with people that where they they don't share until until they're good and ready. You know, it's 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 a thing where, I mean, just a sort of a common example is I'll be working with someone and just we'll just be leaning from side to side and breathing and feeling their body want to elongate and pull in and then they might pull in and get really really small you know and I, and I might just mention oh yeah so you know the, sometimes the body just needs to get small like you I don't know it kind of looks like you don't want to be seen or something and 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 the, this glimmer of rec recognition comes up and I can tell that there's a, a real intense energy that my body is registering through this mirror response system and, and we'll just sort of talk about it on a non-content level until they're ready to talk about it. And so basically you're talking yeah. around it yeah. without but, getting it. So when you say non-content, I'm just explaining. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes I'll even tell somebody like, hey look, if, if there was something that happened in your life that you at some point want to tell me, it's okay and you don't have to tell me right now if you're not ready to tell me. All right, and then sometimes people will tell me later, they'll say, I kind of want to tell you, but I kind of don't. And I'll just tell them, it's all right. You know? It's what works. Yeah. 
Yeah, do it when you're ready. So, you know what, that brings me to something, and we're going to go, um, we're going to step away from this method, which, by the way, you guys, when I did this, it was nothing short of transformational. And you guys know I use my tools a lot, and I work with individuals. I've been doing this a long time. Anyone who thinks that they're perfect just because they know how to do something, <laughs> they've got some life lessons coming. It doesn't matter whether you are, you know, a Mr. Powell, um, a Coach Nikki, or or Joe, and or it doesn't matter. Um, we all can use these tools to better and and build a, a better life for ourselves, and one that's less, you know, uh, stressed and and less packed with with past. You know, kind of like you know, have you ever stuffed? Um, you know, packed brown sugar into a cup and it gets really compacted and it comes out still solid. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's can be, that's stress in the body. It sits there until we, we break it up and, and work with it. And what's really awesome is there's so many different ways to do that. And we've talked about a couple tonight, but what I really want to hit right now is getting people to recognize. How do we get people to recognize that maybe it would serve them to reach out to someone? And uh, so that's part one and part two. Um, what about those individuals that are so, so far away from, from being able to reach professional services? What would you, excuse me, what would you recommend? Well, I guess when it comes to um, knowing when to reach out, uh, when, when, when you're able to reach enough of a level of stillness uh, that, that any, any shift inside of you is noticeable, mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's a heck of a lot easier to to sort of know when you when you need to reach out to someone I mean, it's, especially if they're already kind of in your life and in, 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 in your presence What will happen is you're learning how to get calm You're learning how to be okay in your own skin and to feel the the, the pent-up stress survival energy uh, Coursing through your body and working out what happens is you're just walking around and you see you see a friend and you, can't, you For some reason you just keep thinking oh, I can't stop kind of noticing them and, and then at that point, it's really easy to, to say, hey, look, I just want to check in. Are you all right? And, uh, you know, sometimes your colleague, your friend, your family member will be like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, and you realize it's like, they're, they're looking pretty good. But I did this, by the way. <laughs> so you do that, yeah. Right, so you see how, so this is how it works. And, uh, and, and then, then you're able to really be there for somebody when it comes to when you're far away from services. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's certain there's only so far you can go with self help. Mm -hmm. exactly. A lot of times, bringing a friend in uh, to to explore it with you, to feel it with you, to be your sort of uh, healing buddy. You know, and then a lot of times it's a lot easier if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna go email somebody that you really like, say their self help stuff on YouTube or something. Yeah. You know, it's a lot easier than to reach out to them. Hey, me and my buddy are trying to do this together, and we were just wondering if you had a few tips for us because this is what happened. You know. They might, they might give you a few tips. You That's know. actually a pretty cool idea. And just so you guys know, if you're you're struggling to recognize um, where you're at, let's say you've been so disassociated, you cut yourself off basically from your emotions, um, go and look at the five mindsets of stress. I've got it on LinkedIn. Um, basically, I've, I've broken down the mindsets so you can actually see yourself when you're feeling most free and you're that you can you feel you can do anything all the way down to death and I don't mean suicide I mean just do not want to engage in any way shape or form it's complete and utter disconnect from everything um, but it does there can be suicide when people reach this stage they 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 tend to they have choices and they they weigh those choices a little bit heavier but look at this and you can look at it you can look at it from a, a very logical rational standpoint and you can see it it's sometimes it may be easier for your friend to see it in you before you see it but when you feel that it's really important to reach out don't stay and in, in a very in that dangerous space you know reach out to a friend i have i have gone up to jared jared i need to talk to somebody right now i am not okay and I really need help. My stresses on are on too many different levels. And Jared went, here you go. <laughs> and gave me a few names. 
and I found somebody and I, I went in and I talked and then one of my other friends came back into my life that is also somebody that was that purpose. And so I was able to go back to that relationship. And just so you guys know, it doesn't matter if you're a doctor, a scientist, the president, a brand new kid on the block, everyone deserves to have someone to talk to. And if you don't have someone that you trust explicitly, then find a perfect stranger. You know, there are perfect strangers out there that do this and are loving that mental health journey and living that purpose of healing. Reach out and, and make a friend and not just, I don't just mean a friend from a, a let's go play board gaming, which we do, but I, I do mean reach out and actually set an appointment with somebody and, and sit down. And if that's not available in your area, go to somebody you trust, a spiritual leader, um, your pastor, your bishop, your, your, um, your priest, you know, they're there for you. They, they've most likely received training for this and they're there. And if you're having troubles calming, take a few deep breaths. It's a really easy way to calm yourself so you can even get to that point as he's, he's sharing. And you have, you've done this so many times and so many different levels. What do you think about meditation? Meditation is one of the best ways to build your neural platform unless when you go to meditate with whatever method you're using, uh, it sets off the fireworks before you can actually feel, you know, uh, calm. It, it, um, for some people, a little meditation will send them into serial panic attacks. For mm -hmm. some people, they'll feel, uh, which is a lot safer, they'll feel a really intense, crazy boredom. And they'll say, oh, I just don't want to do it. But um, that's the, the boredom, usually as long as you don't push it and you just kind of stay with it, uh, there will be some neural discharge, some some like shivering and shaking that will come through. And uh, and honestly, when or it comes... You can say, or it can be restlessness. Yeah, restlessness. Yeah. A lot of times there's there's something behind that. And those defensive mechanisms that give you that restlessness or that boredom, they're not your enemy. Collaborate with them. Don't try to rip them off or set them aside. Don't try to drink them off or smoke them off or needle them off or something. You know, a lot of... Be with them. <laughs> Do you know? not give a band-aid to a sucking yeah. chest wound, folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're taking your, your prescribed medication or, or, you know, your healer's herb balm or something, it's like, take that, you know, but uh, as long as it doesn't lobotomize or numb you for a while, you know, yeah. and you can actually feel. Which I'm going to go ahead and add, medication should never be a first response. It's the last resort. You, you work with the body. You work with the source. Yeah, a lot of times. That's my personal yeah, belief. I, I, I can see that. I mean, a lot for, for a lot of folks, that's that's the way to do it. I, there's every now and again for somebody who goes into serial panic attacks when they try to meditate. That's different. Yeah, you know, the window of clarity provided by uh, the right level of medication uh, is it can sometimes help people get in so that they don't armor up or and go into panic. We've talked about that. Yeah, it gives them that 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 window to actually step forward and go okay. I can actually do this. Oh yeah, when you can get so. to a point where you can meditate and feel the goodness, like the shifting, changing, and, and connection in your body, uh, then then it's such a great way to build your neural platform. So that so that all sorts of things are going to work. Okay, better. you're doing it again. Neural oh, the platform. Words, the words. Yeah. So I'm sorry, you guys. I promise I'll keep interrupting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So to to to, to build uh, this foundation of. Um, just, just be, being able to feel so okay in your own skin that you're able to be present for healing. You'll, you're going to be present for others. You can, you can be with them and feel stuff with in a way that feels like love to them. Yeah, that's actually right. Really huge. You, he brought in the word love, and I actually love the word love because love is amazing at what it can do. And by the way, that is not a result result based treatment. It is just fact. And I. I will say, I say fact, you know, and if you want to argue with me, please, I'll hug you. So, <laughs> so human, so human to, to, to the love is this human thing. And it's always, it's there within humans. A lot yeah. of times it's all blocked up and bound up and hurt, but it's, it's like, so it's many human. walls, but yeah. I mean, let that love out. It's amazing what it can do. But if you're having difficulties, even getting to, into that space of doing, um, meditation. Okay. Take three breaths. Go sit on the toilet, let yourself poop. Believe me, by the way, sphincters relax when you're taking deep breaths. It's a really good feeling. But let it out and just breathe with it. And then just do that for that moment. It stops that automatic process of fight, flight, freeze and allows you to go into analytical thought to where you can actually look at it for a second. And if that's all you can do, that is totally 
okay because guess what you took a you took a step and it's a start yeah meeting a bodily need like that uh there's, there's, you <laughs> which know, there's, one were you talking yeah. about <laughs> well, the big 10 buck the big 10 buck word uh would you know your, your parasympathetic response that comes on when you're when you're when you're excreting you know it's like that's a that's the thing you know it's uh it, it, it and it's not completely unheard of that somebody who's doing uh body mind work with me might suddenly have to use the restroom believe it, it or not happens. yes if you're moving stuff, Especially stuff needs soft. to go out. Yeah. Let it go. You don't want to hold on to it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've had fun, and we can always do this some more. Yeah. Is there one thought you'd like to leave with everybody? Yes. Uh, you, all of you, are designed to self-sense, self-adjust, self-heal. Yes. This amazing uh, mechanism that your body is, is designed for it. And when you can tap that self-healing, self-adjusting capacity... Uh, the world is yours, <laughs> you're connected with others, and life is good. And not only that, but it ripples. It doesn't just stop with you. Let that feeling grow, let you be okay, and you know what? Embrace it. Let it be. Okay. On that note, I'm going to talk to him about when our next game night is, and I'm going <laughs> to just Let's do have, that. That's, have totally some fun. By the way, if you have not played the game Telestration... You want to talk about getting things out <laughs> and finding some release? That's an awesome game. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Coach Nikki. This is Jared Powell. And it was a pleasure being with you guys this week um, for our Friday stress calls. So you guys remember, 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You guys can translate that into all of your different time zones. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week.